Welcome to Delta's video tutorial for holding one-on-one -on -one student appointments, including advising in Zoom. You will need to have an updated version of the Zoom desktop client on your machine to host meetings in Zoom. Please see our separate video on downloading and updating your Zoom desktop if you need help with this. Let's start by logging into ncsu.zoom. Dot US. When you log in into Zoom, you will land on your meetings page. If you have future meetings scheduled, they will be listed on this page. For one-on-one -on -one scheduled appointments with students in a virtual office, we recommend using your personal meeting room. This page shows you all the current settings for your personal meeting room. First, we will go through the recommended settings, and then I will show you where you can edit them if you want to. We do not recommend requiring a meeting password. Share this join URL with your students to let them know how to meet with you at their scheduled appointment time. This is akin to giving them your office location on campus. We recommend that the meeting starts with both your and your students' videos on. They can always be turned off in the meeting if desired. Students should be able to join by both telephone and the computer audio. Under meeting options, the only one I recommend enabling is the waiting room. I will explain the waiting room in more detail a little later in this video. To change any settings for your personal meeting room, click Edit this meeting. When you save the settings you want, click Save. Let's say it's time for your first block of advising appointments to begin. From this personal meeting room page, click Start Meeting. Click on Open to launch the desktop client and essentially open your office for advising. Your hosting screen will have your video going and the host controls along the button. When a student joins by the URL, they will show up like this in your waiting room. When you are ready to start your meeting with a student, you can admit them from the waiting room. If another student tries to join while you are in a meeting, they cannot enter until you admit them. If you are doing group advising, you can admit several students at once. Otherwise, once your first student leaves the meeting and you are ready, you can admit the next student. Let your students know to expect to enter a waiting room and be admitted when you are ready for them. You cannot communicate with students while they are in the waiting room, but if you need to, you can admit a student, have a word with them, and then place them back in the waiting room. You might want to do this if you are running behind schedule or a student shows up without an appointment and you want to speak with them briefly. The most relevant hosting tool for advising appointments is the share screen tool. You or your students can share a screen using this tool. For instance, if you need to show a window in my pack portal or another app or web page, you can do so. If you want to point out areas on the share screen to your students, use the annotation tool to do so. And you can save this screen with annotations if you need to. When your meeting with this student is over, they will leave the meeting but you will stay in your personal meeting room and admit the next student when their appointment time arrives. Enter your personal meeting room each time you have a block appointment starting. I hope this short video helps you feel prepared for how to meet with a student in Zoom. The Zoom website has many very helpful sets of instructions and the tutorials. And if you need more assistance, you can also contact Delta's LearnTech Help Desk. Happy virtual advising from all of us at Delta.